All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning into our monthly webinar series on Phase One industrial cameras and their applications. If you've been following along, you had a great intro into flight planning with James last month. This month, we're continuing the series with a talk on drone bridge inspections using Phase One industrial cameras. Uh, here we go. My name is Ryan Boswell. I'm the area sales manager for UAVs at Phase One Industrial. I've been working in the survey industry for eight years now, mostly on the manned aerial survey side. However, for the last five, I've also been involved in UAVs as an augment to that traditional manned survey. It's been a great opportunity to see the UAV side of the industry grow from theoretical to practice and now to scaling up to large projects in such a short time. I'm excited to continue down the path with UAVs here and, and see where we're heading from there. I'm joined today by Dave Day, who's the Executive Vice President at Keystone Aerial Surveys in Philadelphia. Dave has been in the survey industry for 24 years and is an ASPRS certified photogrammetrist. He's also been instrumental in leading Keystone into the digital era, both in image collection and workflow. I worked with Dave to develop the UAS department at Keystone and couldn't be happier to share this virtual stage with him today. I'll start today by giving you a little background on phase one. Phase one is the world leading provider of medium format digital imaging systems and solutions <coughs> for industrial applications and professional photographers. We provide imaging breakthroughs that focus on imaging accuracy for industrial applications ranging from aerial survey through machine vision and homeland security. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we are the market leader in medium format imaging with over 100,000 customers worldwide. We have locations in 25 countries that allow us to provide 24-7 global customer support and an established worldwide distribution infrastructure. You can see on this map, we have <coughs> sorry, our major locations worldwide. As you can see, phase one is headquartered in Copenhagen. We have major R&D facilities in Israel and Japan, along with our lens and manufacturing facility in Japan. We also have major sales offices in North America, in Denver, Colorado, the EU in Cologne, Germany, and Asia Pacific in Hong Kong. Now on to the main part of the show for today. Today, we're going to take a look at a comparison study I was lucky enough to work with Dave on last year. We wanted to look at the advantages, advantages of using Phase 1 to support Keystone's existing bridge inf inspection workflow and find new efficiencies in the process. In the last few years, bridge inspections have been a major focus of the UAV industry. The main reasons behind this shift are many, but I'll go over some of the biggest ones here. First, it is very time consuming to inspect a bridge. Oftentimes, this is a process performed for months at a time. In order to inspect a bridge, you have to get up close to it, and there are two main ways to reach the areas of the bridge to be inspected. First is with a boom truck, like you see pictured on the left. This requires a lot of equipment, as well as shutting down lanes of the bridge, potentially causing traffic and reducing toll revenue, depending on your location. There are also a number of accidents involving these snooper trucks, like this one and this one which adds to the risks for these inspections. And even still, there are places you won't be able to access with a bucket truck. In that case, you need to climb down the bridge using rope access, which has its own set of risks associated. As in many fields, something that is time consuming and dangerous adds up to being expensive, but also the perfect place to implement UAVs. These traditional methods of inspection lack the precision you can get from photogrammetric bridge surveys as well, instead relying on hand-drawn maps and measurements of damage. <clears throat> they also lack the year-to-year -year comparisons that are made possible through modern software and imagery-based inspections. <clears throat> All this adds up to be the perfect use case for drones. Because of the UAV, bridge inspections have become more and more common over the past few years. These are typically performed with a DJI Inspire and an X5 camera, or perhaps a Sony a7R camera when modeling the bridge, or a DJI Z30 camera when performing a live video inspection. All these methods allow significant increases in efficiency over the traditional inspection process. They also allow the majority of, bridge, of the bridge to be inspected visually and reduce the need for hand-on inspection to the very worst sections rather than a more randomized inspection process. 
With the exception of the live video inspection, they all allow the bridge's structure to be recorded at that point in time as well. This enables year-to-year -year comparisons and record keeping that have been very difficult or overlooked in the past. Once you start inspecting with drones, you will, however, discover some new pain points. Um, luckily, they can be mitigated by using phase one technology. The first problem you'll run into is achieving the resolution necessary to detect cracks in concrete. The DJI X5 requires flying very close to the bridge in order to be of value. This requires very highly skilled pilots with a knowledge of what they are looking for. It also translates into very long collection periods if modeling the structure is a part of the inspection. The Sony helps in this regard, allowing higher resolution and further distance from the bridge. However, in order to use the Sony, you require a larger drone like the M600, and the distances to the bridge are still close enough that GPS and magnetic interference is a significant concern. Add to this the unpredictable airflow coming off the bridge in windy conditions, and you have a very difficult inspection process. The Phase 1 IXM100 camera solves these problems and has some additional advantages by being a metric camera. In order to achieve the same resolution on the bridge as the Sony, the Phase 1 can fly four times farther away, <coughs> uh, thus eliminating problems from GPS and magnetic interference. At the same time, when modeling the structure and overlap is taken into consideration, the Phase 1 can cover nine times the size of the Sony frame in just one image. This allows significant increases in efficiency and will reduce your man hours for collection considerably. The further distance also allows more confidence to automate flight plans. This reduces the need for highly trained pilots while also enabling repeatability year over year. In order to prove these advantages, I worked together with Dave and the guys at Keystone to compare the Phase 1 IXM100 with an 80 millimeter lens to a Sony A7R with a 50 millimeter lens and a DJI X5 with the standard 15 millimeter lens. For the test, we set up an inspection area of the Taconi Bridge in Philadelphia. We created two flight lines running parallel with the bridge at 30 and 130 feet from the structure. Uh, we did plan these lines out at those distances. However, we were flying manually and some deviation in the distance uh, occurred. We expected to see the sampling resolution from the phase one at 130 feet match the resolution of the Sony at 30 feet. We were unfortunately not able to safely fly close enough with the X5 to attain a matching resolution with that system. Uh, we also wanted to provide the added efficiency of capture, a wider area in a single image with the phase one system, allowing for the bridge to be inspected quicker and with equal or better results. To discuss a little more about the testing and analysis of the imagery, uh, I'm going to pass this off to Dave Day. And Dave? Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me and thanks for your kind words. Um, I just want to mention, uh, I think there's a way to ask questions uh, as well, so please feel free to type in your questions if you have any for Ryan or I um, as we get towards the end of this. So, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about the collection details and go into some uh, more detail about the the testing that we did uh, post. Um, first thing to mention is that uh, we had a limited uh, availability of the site, and so we went in the, the morning and, and flew under the overcast conditions that were there, which resulted in some um, poor and variable uh, exposure of the imagery, especially as you can see on the top image, the um, a lot of the features are underneath uh, a bridge deck. So they're dark to begin with. Uh, this resulted in, in us having to brighten the uh, DJI images uh, in order to get some more detail out of them for the testing. So that's the first um, uh, negative uh, on the DJI uh, inspection side. Um, this is a uh, not a, is a steel structure, uh, not a cement structure. So we focused on the steel uh, portions of the bridge, basically from Pier 1 to Pier 2, uh, focusing on the gusset plates, which uh, you can see down in the, the, those bottom two images, and the, the bearings at the piers. Uh, if this were a cement bridge, we would focus more on um, possible cracks in concrete and mapping out the concrete, but the uh, application is similar. Um, what we did to kind of um, 
make an even comparison is to have um, 14 images from each sensor, seven near, seven far. In reality, we could have used a lot fewer of the IXM images because they covered so much more area, but we just decided to, to focus on the ones that were directly centered on the area of interest, which would be either the gusset or the uh, bearing. Uh, next slide, Ryan. So in order to kind of first judge how well we did uh, not using, relying on GPS, uh, we used the beam width of uh, the beams at the gusset plates to estimate the pixel size of the image. So the pixel size at the gusset plate um, or the bearing. And from that, we estimate it using the, the lens uh, information and the camera information, the distance that the camera was from the gusset plate or the bearing. Uh, so as you can see, the distance is a little further than we thought, and that could also be a variation in our measurement. But I think it gives us a good uh, basis for understanding where the cameras were at the time of acquisition. Um, as Ryan noted, it was a manual flight, so there's some ambiguity in how the uh, pilot flew it. Uh, there's ambiguity in the GPS, the features we're looking at are actually set back a little from the road deck, which can also uh, change that distance. And because, as you can see in the graph, I thought it was interesting, the further the uh, UA got away from the pilot, um, which would be gusset 12 west, the further the, the pilot drifted from the bridge uh, as a safety concern. You, you don't want to be too close to the bridge when the, when the um, UA, UAV is getting to be two or 3,000 feet away from you, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, so this is something that's interesting for future when we talk about automation and being able to have repetitive uh, flights when, it's, when the uh, pilot is not necessarily involved and, and safety uh, is not as big of a concern. Next slide. So I think this is the kind of the most interesting portion of the, the talk. Uh, based on that information, we wanted to kind of visualize uh, the difference between the resolutions. It's easy to talk about them, but uh, what we decided to do is take a 400 by 400 uh, pixel chip centered on each uh, area of interest. And it kind of gives you a very good comparison of the resolution you're seeing between the different uh, cameras. So uh, on the top row, you see the DJI, the Sony, and the uh, IXM at, at the near distance, which is roughly the same distance for those uh, about 50 feet. Below, you can see a another gusset plate captured at about 140 feet from each one of the uh, UAs. Um, what's amazing to me is if you look at um, the middle right image, which is the IXM at about 140 feet. It looks almost identical to the image uh, from the Sony A7R at 50 feet, which is the top middle. So this gives you a visual understanding of what we're talking about with um, the, the resolution that we're able to capture with the camera uh, from much further distances. The bottom row is, uh, it's kind of cut off there, but it's, it's a bearing from Pier 1. It's, uh, again, it's the DJI Sony IXM moving from left to right. And in this one, you can see there's a there's some paint or some chips in the bearing that are visible easily with the IXM, sort of visible in the Sony and, and the DJI, you don't really have uh, a, a clear picture of what's going on with that bearing. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. Uh, the next slide, if we can go to that one, I couldn't fit it all on one slide, is the bearings from uh, 150, 140 feet away. Uh, and you'll have to trust me on this, the, it's the same phenomenon where the IXM on the bottom right is similar to, on the previous slide, the Sony A7R uh, middle uh, picture where it's at uh, 50 feet uh, distance for the Sony. So it's basically the same picture. Um, and that's borne out here in, in 
what I'll talk about next. So the next uh, step we did was to take those 400 by 400 chips and take some measurements to see how many pixels we were getting on a, a meaningful asset. Uh, so we decided to do a rivet, which aren't necessarily, if you know about bridges, uh, that important, but it's uh, something that's easily measured and could be translated to um, something more meaningful. But it's also indicative of crack sizes and um, is searching for those kind of anomalies in cement. Uh, and then we use the bearings themselves, the height of the bearing to, as a measurement tool. And we basically went in and measured uh, a large amount of rivets. And, and, and obviously with the bearings, we could only measure the ones that we could see. Um, and then compared how many pixels uh, you were getting uh, to visualize uh, from each camera. And what's borne out from the pictures is, uh, if you look on the last line, the IXM far is basically giving you 18 pixels uh, per rivet. And the Sony at the top uh, from 50 feet is giving you roughly the same 15.6. So that's why we're seeing similar images at, at a 400 by 400 clip. And it's nearly double the the amount of pixels of the, uh, the DJI X5 at the near position. So this, why is this important? Um, Resolution is important when you're doing post-production um, inspection as opposed to live inspection. Live inspection, you're still going to have to get close and you're going to have to look on, the, on your iPad or whatever device you have to try to visualize an issue. But if you transition to an uh, inspection in the office, being able to zoom in and see clearly anomalies and mark those anomalies is, is extremely important. And it's also important as we look to the future with machine learning. Um, it's it's not there yet, especially with bridges. I know it's much more uh, practical for for other inspection, um, especially uh, power lines and such. Uh, but it hasn't been able to be proven out on bridges yet because there's so much variability. But the more pixels we're able to deliver, the more the machine learning can be taught to differentiate between a um, a normal looking uh, structure, uh, bolt, rivet gusset plate uh, versus a uh, one that needs further inspection. Okay, let's uh, move to the next slide. The last um, test that we did was an edge contrast comparison. And I can offer, uh, I don't know if my contact information is actually out there, but if you're interested, I can give you a white paper where we did a little bit more uh, study of the contrast. Um, again, the the contrast is dependent on a lot of things, including um, the exposure, but lens quality is also an important factor. Um, just the, the conditions, as you can see, uh, there was very, the, the image on the top left, uh, that's sky as opposed to the image on the right, which is water. Those are very similar looking. The sky and the water were very similar that day. There was very even lighting, which makes it difficult to pull out contrast. Um, however, with the IXM, the last bullet point, we did not have to make any enhancements or adjustments to, to see um, the shadow detail uh, of the, uh, the structure underneath the road deck where with the Sony and the DJI, we needed to do that just to be able to make a valid comparison. So that was uh, very interesting uh, to begin with. And then we did some ex extensive work more on the pixel level and that kind of bore out the, the conclusion that is on the next slide if uh, Ryan can switch over to that one. Um, we were able to, it was superior over especially the DJI, but also to some degree Sony in um, pulling out features in, in the shadows and uh, edge contrast as well in the shadows especially. Uh, in the brightness, they were fairly similar, but um, what we were more concerned with anyway is, is uh, getting that detail in those dark areas uh, underneath the, uh, the road deck. There's some also some other conclusions here which I already mentioned about uh, the uh, superior resolution or identical resolution from uh, further distances. 
I apologize for all the words on the screen, but um, you could read the, I'm not gonna go through and read every uh, bullet point there, but I wanted to get them out there. Um, so in the end, uh, what are the benefits? So what are we, what are we seeing from, from this camera as compared to our, our standard uh, way of doing live inspections? Um, as Ryan said, the bridge inspection is one of the most difficult uh, types of drone um, projects that you'll ever work on. Uh, there's GPS occlusions, there's GPS scattering, magnetic inf interference, high winds. Uh, are, even on a calm day, there is going to be some wind uh, generated by the uh, over the water, over the struct, uh, and over because of the piers and just the physical structure of the bridge creates uh, variable and um, changing winds. So it's right now it's very difficult for a pilot to fly by hand. Being able to fly two or three times further away from the bridge and still capture the same amount of information for the inspectors will allow us to fly autonomously or at least much more repeatably and safely uh, with a, a manned pilot. So that's one very important feature. Now, the higher resolution also allows us to, when we do that post uh, processing and inspection, to zoom in much further to really inspect details, which is going to be important as the uh, inspectors transition from going out for a full week or a full month on site to be able to have our crew come out, fly for a couple hours, capture imagery of all the bridge, take it back to the office, do a um, a triage of all the images, find out exactly where they want to go out and do hands-on inspection. That's still going to be required, at least uh, currently under um, federal regulations, you still have to have someone physically on the bridge, uh, touching it, uh, even performing soundings uh, in order to, to satisfy the um, the regulations for a true inspection, but being able to pinpoint exactly where to go and which 10% of the bridge you're going to look at is something that we can provide at a, a much more cost-effective rate than than those bucket trucks that Ryan showed, and also theoretically at a, a safer uh, manner as well. And because we are acquiring so much more data, theoretically we can also uh, deliver much uh, less imagery. Um, that's important when the inspector is physically looking at the imagery, but will be less so as we uh, transition to machine learning. It'll be more important that we're giving it imagery that's of a higher resolution, that the machine can uh, do the triage and just uh, deliver uh, chips that have that it's found as as possible areas to for the uh, expert to to review and inspect and decide what needs to be done. And then finally, uh, what we hope to do, coming from the ASPRS uh, photogrammetry side, I, I love to do the mapping and the 3D modeling. We found it very difficult to uh, get a software package that could do the modeling the way we want it to uh, under the limitations. Uh, basically, really large bridges like this where there's a lot of water underneath, uh, it does not work well with most packages. Uh, you're not able to fly in the desired pattern, which is a circular pattern um, with a 30 to 45 degree angle oblique, as well as a, a uh, the nadir pattern, because you're not able to fly over the bridge deck uh, at this point under the regulations. So we've hit some walls, but theoretically, uh, if we can, if those regulations change and the software continues to improve, a camera, a metric camera like the IXM will provide superior results and be able to uh, allow us to model the bridge and then apply those uh, inspection photos to a model where we have a 3D G, uh, GIS uh, theoretically that could, uh, based off of the point cloud model where the user can interact with uh, images and inspections from current inspections, previous inspections, and, and even highlight areas where they want uh, further inspections to take place, manual inspections. So uh, the future is bright, and this camera is uh, really uh, cool technology that we're uh, happy to be part of. So.
that is my part. I don't I don't have any questions on my screen, Ryan. But yeah, I, thanks, Dave. Uh, I don't see any questions up at the moment. Does anybody have anything they'd like to uh, enter in? There's a there should be a question box on the on the right side there, or a chat box. Um, me and Dave will be around here uh, for a couple minutes if you guys want to add anything in. No. Okay. Um, Ryan. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Yeah, there's just a couple of questions just oh, coming. There are. Oh, there Hi, this, okay. this is Paula from Phase One as well. Uh, what value do you see in regard to capturing higher resolution imagery by flying as close or just slightly further than the A7R? Dave, you want to take that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, that's what happens uh, coming from the man side. As soon as we get a new camera with higher resolution, that allows us to fly higher and capture five centimeter. Everybody says, well, why don't you fly at the same resolution and capture one centimeter? Um, the, the, the value, um, I think you'll generate a lot of imagery and it'll be obviously very, um, too, there'll be probably too much overlap and there'll be uh, too much space taken up on your uh, on your servers uh, you'll have a data problem issue and i don't see the value unless you're uh, mapping concrete uh, structures so if you have a large anchorage uh, that is all concrete and you want to map cracks that are down to we've at we've been asked as small as a tenth of an inch uh, that's when it is valuable. We've had to fly as close as 10 feet away from the structure to, to measure it. And um, we'd much prefer to fly a little bit further away and a little safer. So I see that as really the only application when you're, you're trying to map out uh, cracks. If you're doing an inspection like we we're on a, on a um, steel structure, I don't think it's as important. You can tell what you need to uh, from the images that I sh I've shown uh, from those resolutions. Okay, thank you. Um, and then there's another one just down. Um, how does the IXM compare to the IXU camera? So the, the IXM is our uh, new generation of camera designed specifically for UAVs. Um, we have a new sensor in there. It's still 100 megapixel, but it's a new backside illuminated sensor. Uh, the camera itself is a lot smaller and lighter than the IXU before it. Uh, and it also, I think, critically for inspection processes like these, uh, has a remote focus option where you can control the distance of the focus uh, remotely through through our uh, IX Capture mobile app. So it, it really increases the uh, efficiency of doing these types of inspections. Thanks, Ryan. There's just one more question. Um, do you have a recommended software for mosaicing data from bridge inspections? I'm guessing that's the for you, Dave. Um, Bentley Context Capture is probably uh, the one you'll get the best results from. Um, but again, we've had, we haven't had complete results of bridges that are like a mile long. We, we can't get those to work. It's it, we can get partials. Um, we've used PIX4D and uh, same results, but actually not quite as good. So. Okay, and there, oh gosh, there are a few more coming in. Um, what size data set is commonly generated with one of your cameras for a typical bridge? So, I mean, that really depends on the resolution that you're trying to get out of the bridge. Um, but if you look at, uh, for example, that, that Sony comparison there, the Sony pictures come out, you know, they're about 45, 50 megabytes per image. Um, and while ours are more like 100 to, to 200, uh, if we're capturing nine times the area, you can see if you're comparing GSD to GSD, uh, you'll actually get a lot less data out of our camera. Um, and it'll be a smaller data set. So it, it really depends on the resolution that you're trying to get. For for a very large bridge, we might capture 500 to 700 images with a Sony. Uh, with the IXM, that's gonna be 200, 
300 at the most. So. Yeah. Um, just another one. How does less imagery stitched together compared to more pictures generated with the Sony or the X5? Uh, Dave, you want to take that with your photographic uh, background? <laughs> Well, it depends on how your software works, right? So if, if you're a structure for motion software, which is what uh, Pix4D, theoretically, lots of images helps uh, with lots of overlap. However, if the camera is not very high quality, it doesn't matter how many images you take, they're not going to work. Um, so, and then if the software has issues with uh, water and sky, which you're going to capture a lot of from a drone flying over a, a bridge or around a bridge, it's not going to also matter. So then you rather work with less imagery that's more metric, better lens. I can't stress that enough when you're talking about mapping high quality lenses. Uh, then you'll be able to generate better quality maps with fewer images. Okay. I think we just got one more. Thanks for that, Dave. Um, do you find a zoom lens useful? So I, I think that depends on the type of inspection that you're doing. Um, I think you know a zoom lens, and like I said, the DJI Z30 uh, is is a popular choice for people doing live video inspections with the inspector standing there uh, who wants to zoom in and see things. I think the big advantage to phase one cameras is capturing that level of detail uh, in a big image that you can then, you can send someone out, capture the whole bridge, and then an, analyze the imagery after the fact. Um, that way you don't have to have an inspector on site. Um, you can take a lot less time on site, and then you can analyze the imagery later. But, you know, there are some people that want to sit there and, and zoom in. So it depends on your inspection process, but I don't think uh, that in the way that we're trying to push this camera that it makes sense. Um, Dave, do you have anything to weigh in there? No, I, th I think I agree exactly. Uh, we do we do both. Uh, I think we're going to be moving to uh, less on-site inspection, but when you are doing that on-site inspection, the zoom is important. Uh, but the thing is you're still unless you're capturing uh, imagery and going back to the office, if you, you're going to miss something uh, because you're going to just be flying through and hope to see it and then zoom in on it. So it's really important yeah. to then either capture lots of imagery and still do the post-production or just take the chance that you'll miss something. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, Paula, is there anything else there? No, that, that's all the questions answered. Okay. Well, if nobody else has anything else, uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to uh, myself, Paula, or Dave. Um, if you need contact information for Dave, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, to me or Paula here. Um, we'd be happy to talk more in depth and uh, answer any additional questions you guys have. So thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate your time this morning, and, and I hope you found it a valuable use of your time. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care, everyone.